I think I've had more fun this baseball season than I've ever had in any sports season. Right. Ever. Perfect. Loved it. It was the best. It made it all, it made it that all like all, all that much better. Cleveland fans, welcome back into the Cleveland Pulse YouTube channel. I am joined with a very special guest today, Gab Gowdy. Welcome into the Cleveland Pulse. First appearance on the channel. I'm excited, glad that you were able to sit down. We were to make some time here today to talk about our beloved Cleveland sports. I know you work with FanDuel. I know you're a Cleveland sports fan. What else, before we get started, what else should I know about you as far as you being a fan of Cleveland sports? That's basically all I got right now. That's that's basically it. She's that's all out. you need to know. I, cut, I, I yap on it. the internet. I like Cleveland sports. Sometimes I hate Cleveland sports, but I do love them. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about what makes a uh, desirable sports fan base and, and stuff like that. And uh, if you have any advice about, you know, if you could give any advice to Cleveland sports fans, but we'll talk about that in a little bit to start here. I want to gauge your, your general thoughts on a scale from one to 10 the city as a whole, the sports teams, how, how are you feeling? 10 being like, yep, every team is in a, a perfect place to contend for their respective championship. Mm, see, that's hard because like there's two that are like really, really good. And then you have, the and Browns. then there's one that should have been good, yeah, but true. they just never do it. I would say like the other two are really bringing up the bottom. So I would say like a six and a half, seven. Six and then that's pretty good for Cleveland sports. We've had yeah, plenty of I years think, where it's been like a zero. Yeah, I think really good. And then there's that. Fair enough. Fair enough. And and I'm sure you've been asked this, but what Cleveland sports team do you like being in person the most? The Cavs for sure. The Cavs. Okay. Because yeah. I know well, I know you're a, you're an underrated baseball yapper on social media so i i think it's interesting that everyone thinks a lot of your content is at progressive field and stuff like that but you actually enjoy going to Cavs games the most huh i would say baseball playoffs are my favorite but if i'm just going to like a regular game i mean like guardians games are great i would never say that they're not but just the Cavs experience is a different thing i feel like nba experience is different you're inside there's entertainment at all times right i know it's just a different environment they shoot the fire off at the beginning. Yeah, the like intros it's, are, it's a whole production. Baseball, maybe it's just a baseball has like a, a branding and marketing issue almost. Like yeah, if, and there's like a lot of downtime too. Not as much now, but right, still like. Right. I don't know, there's there's moments of, of baseball games where I'm like, okay, when, when Andrew Miller, when his entrance used to happen and, and when closers and, and people like that would come into games, I feel like that's like the peak of baseball like yeah. watching as far as like the storyline obviously you have your home runs and your scoring runs and it's a lot more momentous in a in a mm -hmm. baseball stadium when something yeah. is happening because you could go you could go hours without anything happening where in basketball it's a little bit more fast paced yeah. let's let's stay on that actually you have an interesting little phrase woat worst <laughs> of all time I, I know who you're talking about, and if for people who don't know what she's talking about, or if you haven't seen Gab over on Twitter or on X, go go look at her profiles. They'll be linked down below. But so you'll you'll find out who's who she's talking about. My question is, as far as fan culture, what in your opinion do you find like commendable, or what do you think is like the best part about when you go to other stadiums or when you see other teams play? What are like the best characteristics as far as their fan bases compared to what do you think is like, oh, this is what makes a sports fan base really, really bad? Mm, it's just like how they talk about their players. I feel like it's okay. the main thing. I know sometimes we'll say like awful. I mean, we have we literally got scolded by the media for a whole week about our fans. That's true. But I feel like a lot of fan bases don't appreciate their teams or what they're doing. I feel like we as a Cleveland sports community, we do get upset, but we attend and we appreciate and we have fun. And I don't think some of like the bigger market teams, you don't have that because it's not the same community. Like you, like a Yankees fan, for example, big fan base, obviously, but it's not a community. They don't have the same kind of community. I don't think mm -hmm. it means the same to them as it does to like us. Yeah, there's they're a little bit more like entitled. They just think this stuff is going to right. go their way. Or it's supposed to, and then it hasn't in a very long time. So I don't know why they're still doing that. Yeah, so maybe. And there's and there's good segments of all fan bases. Yeah, don't, for sure. Don't, Every don't get us wrong. The worst of the worst. D don't get us wrong, but it's maybe the Dolans are onto something. Maybe they're like, hey, we're gonna tell you guys we're not paying anybody, and then 
Jose decides to stay and everyone's like hyped on that because yeah, like this, this doesn't happen because as I was doing a little, little research on some of your previous opinions and stuff like that, before Mm -hmm. I sat down here, I think it's important to know your guests before you speak to them, especially if you invite them on. But you were a big proponent as I feel like a lot of people were of paying Francisco Lindor. Yeah. So if that's, that's kind of the duality of guardians, you know, fandom, the Dolans are like, Hey, enjoy him. He's not going to be here basically. And then Jose's like, yeah, this is, this is my home. This is where I want to be. So that's kind of an interesting, you know, Mm -hmm. part about being in a smaller market is it does feel more like of a community. Like you said, interesting. So let's, let's segue into you reaching out to newer and maybe younger Cleveland sports fans, because I think that Interestingly enough, we all kind of describe ourselves as like delusional Cleveland sports fans as far as we always think that the team has a chance, which is most fan bases. But in Cleveland, it's almost like, yep, there's always next year. And then this year rolls around. You're like, yes, finally, we have this year. What would you say to Cleveland sports fans who are like just getting into being fans or following the teams? If you had advice to give them about how to deal with heartbreak and disappointment or like this most recent guardian season coming to an end. How do you, how do you kind of process when a team has a good year, but they don't go all the way like we've seen time and time again? Yeah. So I think that this year it didn't end the way anybody wants it. I mean, it never does. It never ends the way you want it to end, but I think I've had more fun this baseball season than I've ever had in any sports season ever. Nice. So I get a lot of people like the beginning of the year, all the fans were like, don't feed into the hype. Don't feed into the hype. Why not? Why are you depriving yourself from good baseball in a good time? That's the part of Cleveland sports fans that I'm tired of hearing about. Like the same with the Browns last week. They're like, oh, if he would have dropped, if he would have caught that ball, the game would have been over. Guess what? Kyle Hamilton dropped it and the Browns won. Like, why are we still being so negative when you can just have fun? Sure. Be negative about the bad things. That's fine but just try to enjoy and have fun because that's the whole point of being a fan. You got to, you got to take your wins uh, when you can, especially at Northeast Ohio. Like you can't be picky as far as, Oh, you know, it's the, the the only time that the only championship in recent history was a three to one comeback. Like, and it was great. Perfect. Loved it. It was the best. It made it all, it made it that all like all, all that much better, obviously. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting how fans kind of interact. I feel like I feel like negativity sells at such a high level it these does. days, and I'm sure you see that too. Um, just interacting with all your followers and stuff like that is is like objective positivity like completely dead, or do you think there's still a little pocket on the internet or like in real life where you're like, all right, people genuinely want to see, you know, people succeed and good things happen, or are they always are they more interested in the negativity i know people you know want to have a positive attitude but does negativity just sell that much more i think for football it does for football okay because maybe because there's less games yeah i think for football definitely does i don't think for baseball not so much because they're playing every single day you move on from it within two days it's already done and over with you know there's a Um, whole week in between football games okay that's interesting to discuss every single thing that's happened and keep making up new scenarios that haven't happened but could happen the whole entire week. Yeah. I think it's a little different from football to baseball. Basketball, I feel like still a little negative, but still not as bad as football. But the funny thing about that is like, it's still the same with Cleveland sports fans. Like we have the guardians and caps, we know great. I feel like people say more negative things about them than the Browns. The Browns have the longest leash. Right. And basically. they're the worst ones. I'm like, yep. come on guys. That's that is interesting. And I've I actually agree with that because I've I've always said this about the ownership classes. Like you don't have to agree with me. You don't have to be like in love with the Dolans, but the Dolans, Chris Antonetti, whoever it may be, the Guardians have been the most competently run franchise in the city for for the last decade, if not longer. The Cavs have been pretty good. You yep. know, you know, good. I, I, I'm a fan of the ownership group over at the Cavs. I don't yep. think I could say the same, for, you know, for the Browns for yeah, the I most part. And and Andrew Barry, I, I like. I, I don't have any issues with Andrew Barry. I don't know if he's the best general manager in the city. I I thought that he had some interesting decisions, and I think that he's provided stability at least for the most part, if you want to call it that. But yeah. 
the front office of the guardians, the ownership group, they've always done the most with less. So that's why I've, a lot of people don't really, you know, pay attention to the baseball team in the city. And yeah, I get it. There's so many games and the games are long, even though we're on the pitch clock now and stuff like that. But I just, it's interesting to me how fans kind of talk about the three teams in the city. And that's a good point. Like you said, why, why do you think that is though, that the Browns, is it because they've been bad for so long and now they're like deep, like they've been decent or above average these past couple of years. So now everybody just is giving them the benefit of the doubt. I, I, I don't know. I think it's just a false hope that these people have that eventually something's going to work out, but it just still hasn't. And they keep holding on to it, which I hope it does. Right. Cause like these people deserve it. They've seen the worst of the worst. But I'm just not – I'm not going to buy into it because I already know what's going to happen with them. And it's interesting to me because it feels like when – they're the only team where the big move hasn't really, like, worked so far. Right. Like, I guess the Guardians, you don't really have a sample size, but, you know, like yeah. we talked about, you retain Jose. That's been good. It, mm-hmm. You know, he's 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 one of the best players to ever, you know, play baseball um, in Cleveland, you know, in my opinion. Yeah. Donovan Mitchell – that looks like it's working out great. great. Yeah, that's um, been great. Five and zero, oh, off to a hot start. The decisions that you know the Browns have made, regardless of of how you you know, of of what you thought of them, they just they never seem to work. Even going all the way back to you know Odell Beckham Jr. was that yeah. like was that great? Like all right, cool. We, there's a big marquee receiver. We basically you know he had to come to us because we traded for him, but you know it just hasn't. It never seems like it it works out for the team that plays on the lake. So how do you, how do you feel about the, the, um, the stadium moving? I think it looks good. I think it, the use of it will be nice. It looks good, but um, I just feel bad that people have to pay so much money for the product that they're getting. Right. Not it, the stadium, the product on the field being played with it. That's, that's been my issue this season too, because all the timing has just been wrong. Like you're two and four, you're two and five, or you were one and five, one and six, two and six. And then, oh, like, yeah, we're going to move the stadium. Yeah. And we want you guys to pay for it. Yep. Like I was just annoyed by the sequencing and the timing of everything because just right. like, just stop trying to distract us from the fact that this is just, this is a terrible. Disaster, this has been yeah. so bad so far. And all you want to talk about is, oh, the future, the future, like this, we've been talking about the future with mm-hmm. this franchise for forever. So I got a couple more questions here. I'm not going to take up too much of your yeah, time. No, you're fine. I also think they're in like a really, sorry, I was going on no, another you're good. You're good. I think they're in a really awkward position now with Jameis Winston starting. Cause obviously he had, he played better. He was clearly better with the offense, but I think it puts him in a very awkward position now. Cause do you want to keep winning games? Like, what do you do? Any team that's two and six is going to be sellers and you're trying to get a draft pick, but I don't know if that's going to happen now. Right. Right. Do you, people do you... are also trying to save their jobs. Yeah, and people are trying to, you know, make sure they get that next contract. That's what makes the NFL interesting because they is there tanking? Sometimes there's strategic yeah. tanking, but yeah, I mean, the the most the most Browns thing that can happen this year is that we're like so we have like seven or eight wins and we get like a mid first round pick. Yep. And they have to tell us that. And another thing, it's like the Winston thing. One one example would be one thing, but Winston is your second case study. Joe Flacco came yeah. in last year and played good. So I mean, you have wins with PJ Walker. Correct. Not like he was impressive by any means. Correct. But it's like, how are you going to convince the fan base that we're going to send out Deshaun Watson next season? It'll be interesting, but yeah, we got a lot of still have so much Browns football left to go. It's it's honestly a, a little bit tiring and exhausting, but we'll uh, we'll make it through. So. Doing doing a little uh, a background work, I believe that you you're a former athlete, correct? You you were a, a collegiate level athlete. Yeah, but I was just there for vibes. I wasn't like I wasn't oh, like good. I'm glad you said that because I want I just wanted to know from another former collegiate athlete myself. How do you think competing even at the college level? How do you think that has shaped like your perception of sports and your perception of being a fan? Uh, see, I feel like I didn't, I didn't do much. I was just there for moral support and for vibes. I was just not like I was bad. I just didn't really, I'm not going to lie in college. I didn't really care about playing sports. I tried my best, but I was like, Oh man, I don't know if this is going to be it. I don't know. This is not very fun, but you know, it's it, it, being around people that have to go through so many things. You see a lot. Yeah. And, and being a part of just like a, 
a sporting program or like a uh, like a an or uh, an organization, so to say, you see stuff where that that was me too. Like, did I did I play a lot? Did I get a lot of playing time at the co- at the collegiate level? No. But when you're kind of re- on the team, but you're removed from the action you hear and see all this Mm -hmm. stuff still where you're like, there's, there's the athletic director, there's the parents, there's people that think this should be happening and, and and it's not, or we should be doing this or we'd be better off if we did this. I just think it's so interesting from, you know, being someone who talks about sports on the side and just does it as a little hobby, how interesting it is when you've actually kind of experienced that, albeit on like a minor level. So yeah, it's uh, I don't know. I don't think we give people enough opportunity to really show what they can do or, or we're, we're very reactive. The sports yeah. community is, is very reactive. So it's very difficult to, to kind of operate like that. Last question here before we wrap up, I think I just want to save this one f- for last memorable moments. I'm sure you've, you've been to a lot of them. You've seen a lot of them. If you could pick one memorable Cleveland sports moment that you did not see live, but you could go back and see it live and see it in person. What mo- What would you pick? Oh, it's 100% going to be um, the finals. Game seven in, in Golden State, though? I would love to be there. Yeah, that would be awesome. I guess. I think it would be weird. Or if even you're... just like here celebrating. I was in college, so I just wasn't. Okay, fair enough. Able to do as much then, you know. Maybe game six. Yeah, maybe game six at home. Game seven on the road would be interesting because you do lose that community feel a little bit because you mm-hmm. would be one of the few Cleveland fans in, in California, in golden state. So, okay. Game seven. That'd be interesting. I wish I was at, believe it or not. I wish I was at the uh, Francisco Lindor grand slam. That live. would be awesome. Yep. I see that clip posted yeah. everywhere. And I feel like that clip is like getting to the point where maybe it's a little bit overused on mm-hmm. X, but I'm like, yeah, that, that probably, awesome. yeah, that would have been insane. All right, cool. Well, Gab, yeah, appreciate it. I'm gonna put all your links down in the description below. Definitely gonna link your your baseball, you know, uh, Twitter. I oh, follow <laughs> I follow that one a little bit more. I know that you're a premium. I'm gonna just say premium yapper. At Thank base, you. At I baseball, just, Gab. Some people just need to be. Some people just need to be told off sometimes. Honestly, and it's just like, hey, this is my this is my second account. Don't 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 really worry about it. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, if you made it this far in the video, make sure you're hitting that like button. Make sure you're subscribed down below. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.